Hi, this is Amar Kalu with Fits on the Go. It gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. PJ Devereaux from Hamilton, Ontario in Canada. He's here to discuss with us the results of the POISE 2 trial. Dr. Devereaux, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So can you give us a bit of a background as to uh, what the POISE 2 trial is? Right, so um, 200 million adults every year undergo major non-cardiac surgery globally. And about 10 million of those patients will suffer a major vascular complication in the first 30 days. So we have a problem, and we need to sort out how we're going to actually prevent these events. Um, and so there's two theories in terms of myocardial infarction, which is the most common major complication. One is, is that it's a thrombotic event, and there actually may also be events which are actually supply-demand mismatch. So in the POISE-2 trial, we try to tackle both of these theories in one trial. So we... We know that platelets are activated at the time of surgery, and we believe thrombosis may be important for some of these MIs. And we also have a lot of patients who come to surgery on aspirin, and we're never sure, should we continue it, or should we stop it? And then there's a lot of patients who show up who are at risk, and we don't know, should we start it or, or not? So we tested basically two trials in one with aspirin. So roughly half the patients were actually patients on chronic aspirin. We had them stop it at least 72 hours before surgery, and then on the day of surgery, they were randomized to restart aspirin or to restart placebo, and then they took that into the perioperative period. And then half the patients were patients who were naive to aspirin, had not been on it chronically, and those patients on the day of surgery were randomized to start aspirin or placebo, and then we followed them forward. The um, primary outcome was a composite of total mortality and myocardial infarction. At the same time, we also tested clonidine, low-dose clonidine, we had previously undertaken a large beta blocker trial. We showed that with beta blockers, in the paraprofessional setting, there's benefit. You prevent myocardial infarction. However, we had increased the risk of stroke and actual mortality, and some of that appeared to be actually being driven by the increase in clinically significant hypotension on surgical floors, where there tended to be delays in recognizing it and actually delays in terms of getting it managed. So we had evidence that low-dose clonidine appeared to maybe have less clinically significant hypotension compared to the beta blockers, so we thought we'd also test that at the same time to see if we could, in fact, affect supply-demand mismatch through that, that approach. For the trial, patients were given 0 0 0.2 milligrams of clonidine orally or placebo just before surgery, and they had a 0.2 milligram patch applied to their arm, which delivered 0.2 milligrams a day. It was taken off 72 hours after surgery. Great, and can you tell us what you found with that? Okay, so first the results of the aspirin uh, side of the trial. So once again, our primary composite was 30-day total mortality and non-fatal myocardial infarction. And what we saw is that there was a neutral effect with aspirin. We did not decrease it, we did not increase it. Um, importantly, what we also showed though, there was an increase in very significant bleeding. We increased the risk of bleeding by almost a quarter, and it was very substantial bleeding. We had also demonstrated that, in fact, in regression analyses, that that major bleeding, which was only counted if it preceded the myocardial infarction, was an independent predictor that, in fact, patients would go on to have a myocardial infarction. So one of the potential explanations of why do we see the results in POISE-2, where aspirin is not beneficial preventing a myocardial infarction, in contrast to the non-operative world, we have overwhelming data that aspirin is prevent mm -hmm. beneficial, is that in the perioperative setting where we have a much higher risk of bleeding, we may actually be having a higher risk of those leading to myocardial infarction, even though we may have prevented some thrombotic events, it ends up neutral, whereas in the non-operative world where there's a much lower risk of bleeding, we just may be getting a lot more benefit because we're not getting the negative consequences mm -hmm. of the bleeding in the same proportion. Um, we also did demonstrate that um, looking at the timing of when the bleeding happened, um, that the wisest time to potentially restart aspirin in people who are on it chronically who should go back on it might be between 8 to 10 days after surgery um, because it is important that many people have true indications that they should be on long-term aspirin. But with our data, we're saying that, you know, giving aspirin does not look like a great um, use within the perioperative setting, but still you want to return patients to aspirin when, in fact, it is safe to do so. It's also important to keep in mind the caveat that we do know previously that aspirin does prevent venous thromboembolism in the perioperative setting. Um, however, most physicians actually use oral anticoagulants. So if physicians are going to use oral anticoagulants, as was the case in our trial with 65% of patients, adding aspirin in that setting does not appear to be a worthwhile strategy. Um, it's also important to note that our results were the same for both the patients that were naive to aspirin and the patients who had been on it chronically. In terms of the clonidine results, um, once again, the primary composite was 30-day total mortality and non-fatal myocardial infarction. And once again, we did not see an impact of clonidine. If anything, things were going in the wrong direction. 
And we did see once again that clonidine did increase the risk of clinically significant hypotension. It appeared to be a little bit less than the beta blockers. However, it appeared that the rate control relative to the beta blockers that we had previously established were beneficial to prevent MI was much lower with the clonidine. So perhaps the balance between getting effective heart rate control to decrease actual demand but ensuring you have supply with avoiding hypotension was not the right mix with, with uh, the clonidine and that's why we have a neutral effect. Um, we also did have a statistically significant increase in, in um, non-fatal cardiac arrest. Um, and, you know, there's several people that are using clonidine perioperatively around the world. And I think based on these results, we'd say that that's not a great strategy at this time. But it does offer important insights into, you know, controlling heart rate may be very important. But the issue is how can we do it safely and mitigate the hypotensive response. Mm -hmm. So where do we go from here then? So... We're just about to launch the POISE 3 pilot, which we hope to then convert into a large international trial like POISE 2. And what we're going to test is transamic acid versus placebo, which builds on the um, identification that major bleeding is actually common. It actually does have serious consequences, including cardiovascular like myocardial infarction. And also based upon some of our other data, a lot of patients probably don't have true hemostasis at the end of surgery. So perhaps similar to cardiac surgery, if we were able to give it during the perioperative surgical setting, get true hemostasis, we might actually have better outcomes. Secondly, we will be testing ivabradin um, versus placebo um, with the perspective of trying to get heart rate control with ivabradin, no effect on blood pressure, and that potentially may be a winning scenario given what we've learned now from POISE 1 and POISE 2. Great. Well, thank you very much. This is Amar Kalu with Dr. PJ Devereaux. Here you have it, the results of the POIS2 trial. You can catch more videos on our website on youtube.com slash fits on the go.